Isn't that pretty? Welcome to Sound Paint. My name is Trolls. This is our new Turtz guitar. The Turtz guitar for me is one of the most magical guitars because it has a unique property to it. It's a little more piercing in its sound. But it can also be beautiful for arpeggiations. hear that sort of tight sound. The idea of sampling the Turtz guitar began many, many years before I even got into sampling, namely the first time I heard Stings in the shape of your heart. It has this magical guitar riff, dare I say one of the best guitar riffs written in the last century. That track has always been with me and I think even last year it was resampled for two major top 40 tracks as well. So this is one of those sort of timeless riffs and timeless instruments as well that lives in a unique domain of music. Turtz means a third, so the core instrument is tinier in its body, this beautiful little Martin Turtz guitar, and its root note is in G instead of E, which gives it that sort of tighter, slightly hopsy chordy quality, if you will. In this case here, you're listening to our fingered articulation. Let me just show the art list here because there's some interesting things in it that are unusual to traditional sampling. First of all, you'll notice that we have a category here called attack triggers. Attack triggers is the opposite to the infamous release triggers. Most of us um, developers are often using release triggers, which means when you let go of a key, and I'll demonstrate that in the video as well. But I always wonder like, well, what about the attack? The first thing that hits the ear is the attack, not the release, that's the last thing. So why don't we start focusing more on attack triggers? In this case here, we did it deep sampled for the Martin here. Check out what it sounds like. It doesn't sound like a lot on its own, but it does something unique once you superimpose it with the other sounds. And you can hear that note here, tiny behind it, there's a little bit of tone in it. And right now it sounds sort of obnoxiously like someone is knocking an instrument, but if you turn it down here, you get a little bit of a sort of unique attack to the sound. Are you hearing that? Isn't that beautiful? In sound paint, the engine will take the natural range of an instrument, but expand it infinitely in all directions of your keyboard, or all directions, there's two. It's not like we've gotten 3D yet. But essentially you can play the instrument as a bass, or you can play it very, very up in the highs, uh, more as a banjo or a mandolin. I'll show that as well. So sweet, super warm down the subs. But if you look here in the UI, you'll notice that it says attack, palm mute and sustains. So let me just mute the sustain and the attack here and play the palm mute played alone here with finger. Isn't that sweet? And if you notice here, even on the palm mute, we actually have release triggers as well. In some point, we have something called sound mode. If you click this icon here, you'll see the sub articulations within this instrument here. In this case, we've got release triggers. This is what a release trigger sounds like. Oh, that's beautiful, almost like a flute. So that's just a little bit about attacks and mutes. Obviously, you've got the sustain here as well that we've been listening to. But besides from finger, we also have picked articulation sampled in equal depth. Mm -hmm. 
super sweet tone. We don't like the picks too hard when we sample things. We like them more in sort of a natural range. So imagine you're just sort of soling around an instrument, but not being super like. And it's so sweet when you have infinite velocity layers because you can really. It just feels you're more connected to the instrument and you don't get the velocity bumps as well. I love that for guitar and piano and any kind of plucked instruments because it's more liberating on the keys. For example, playing like trills doesn't feel repetitive. There's always something new going on. You may notice that my keyboard technique is a little bit weird for guitar and I tend to adapt my playing techniques based on what instruments I'm playing because in reality I'm playing a instrument that plays more in a strum like fashion in its core and we'll get back to strums as well. So sometimes I sort of use two hands where I could be doing it with one on the piano if I practice a little more but even if I did I would still sort of prefer the two handed approach. Maybe it's that of going up and down, it mimics a little bit, I don't know, it just feels I'm more connected to the instrument that way. Like for example, if you want to play something soft, but sort of start expressing a little more in the harder notes, It's hard to explain, you sort of have, just have to try it on the keys. But let me show you some more alternative versions of the Turks guitar as well, because you can really play it in many unique ways. Right now we've been looking at very traditional stuff, but let me show you a more sort of banjo-like version of it. In this case here, um, I've actually just tuned up the instrument a whole octave, so everything is a lot more tighter, which supposedly gives some kind of sound like a banjo. And it's the same thing again. You can just express on the instrument because the velocity is just bleeding into each other. This is one of the beautiful benefits of what we call real-time samples, which is the underlying format in sound paint. This is a whole new audio format. Let me show you another version here of the banjo. In this case here, I'm using power chords on top of it. I'm gonna get into the chords a little bit later in the video here, but essentially we recorded 11 different normal chords and then we also did power chords. And the power chords were recorded across the entire range of the instrument, so they become playable and you can use them with normal tones and sustains as well. Check this out. A little bit of fun with the banjos. Let me show you a more natural articulation. In this case here is a turret's delay jam, just using palm mutes and really good for building sort of arpeggiation figures. I like to ping pong with the delay, if you will, and just sometimes let the delay inspire me to develop new figures. It's a little more of an organic type of art feeling. life in it. Let me just turn the effects off because the life is actually not coming from the effects, they're coming from the instrument itself. So doing palm mutes can be a static thing 
but in the way that Darren sampled the instrument, he's a great guitar player. He actually alternates his hand position as he plays different palm mutes on different parts of the instrument as well. And he gives a super organic feeling to it. And then on top of that, of course, the release triggers, which creates this sort of stickiness to the sound. Here is a hidden gem in the Turks library. In this case, I'm using the Gita Lili, which is a different library. In some point, we have something called hidden gems, meaning that if you own both libraries, you will unlock these new programs. This is an example of one of them. So cool. One of the hardest things in deep sampling is to figure out how to do strumming on a piano. Obviously, when you play strumming on a guitar, you hit the strings in a sort of motion, doo -doo 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 -doo, if you did in slow motion, but on the piano, we tend to go more like ding at the same time. So there's a couple of aspects to that. First of all, when you play the keyboard, I tend to think in more strumming fashions. We talked a little bit about it earlier as well, that you sort of had to learn to become that given instrument you're playing. So when I play a violin, I have to sort of lean into the violin as an instrument more but there are certain times where that doesn't work out. And for me, I've tried and created dozens of guitar libraries and trying to figure out how we can do chords. But the reality is that we didn't really have the technology to do it. So what I'm about to play here is in all openness, a prototype, which we're putting in the library so you can try it out. It contains many thousands of samples, but it's the first step in the right direction to really nailing chords. And the stuff I'm gonna show you today is essentially 11 different chords that are spread across the entire keyboard here. Each octave contains 11 different notes in that given chord times all the 11 different octaves on the keyboard. So it's really deep and we're using velocity morphing as well. So you can play soft chords, you can weave in and out of dynamics from the softest piano to the hardest fortissimo. And let me just show you here on the keys actually. So every octave containing 11 variations of that chord with round robin, with velocity morphing as well. And this is our prototyping of chords. I say that because we like to add these things to the libraries, but we also want to be completely transparent that we are still building and maturing this technology. So see it as an added bonus in the library as well. We actually did the same thing for power chords as well. But as I mentioned, we did them across the entire instrument and it's super fun to play with them on top of normal sounds as well. Let me show you. But we also have a variety of more sound designy approaches to the Turks guitar. Here's Morning Fog. It's a beautiful program made by the very talented Nicholas Stackhouse.
so sweet. So that's without moving the mod wheel. Let me just move the mod wheel up here. You're gonna see the volume here is getting dialed up on our free 1928 piano here. They go so well together. I love this combination. Oh, I should have hit this one. And there's so much more to show in this library as well. But as we wrap it up, I just want to say a major thank you to Dominic Miller, who I do not know personally at all, but for having inspired me and I think a whole generation of guitarists by making arguably one of the best guitar riffs of the last century. And he talks a lot about his connection to Bach. As I mentioned in the beginning, this beautiful riff came sort of of a mistake of doing Bach scales. Um, as I musically mature, hopefully, um, I'm actually listening to Bach more and more as well. And I think he's an absolute genius in the sense that he does these beautiful chord progressions. He weaves his melodies in and out of those chord progressions as well. But as Dominic Miller also pointed out in his YouTube video, Bach is always evolving. He's not just taking three, four chords and putting them on repeat. He dares to evolve the musical language. And I think often in today's world, um, we've gotten into this sort of prefab vibe that, okay, if you listen to most top 40, it's very, very repetitive because it has to build to the chorus, so it burns in the brain and you get the thematic stamp and ideally you want to repeat the same chorus as many times as you can and ideally the same word because that burns more in the brain and you are now more musically inhibited than you were before you listened to it. It's like a McDonald's for the brain, if you will. They are, I say, like more designed for easy music consumption. But I think music is a language and it's important that we remember that as we play these instruments as well. And in the case of the Turks guitar, it lends itself to musical inspiration and leading you into new territories because the sound is a lot more tighter than a traditional guitar. You find yourself leading more in the direction of melodies because it's up in the higher range. Normally where you find more melodic material as well. Just such a beautiful instrument and um, I'm so glad that we've captured it. But anyway, um, I'll probably be wise in wrapping up at this point. Thank you so much for watching the video. I cannot wait to show you more sample instruments. This is just the first generation of guitar instruments. We're working on some new technologies that's gonna push this even further ahead as well. And we'll come back to revisit these libraries with these new technologies too.